Good day, students. On this clip, we're going to be going over questions one to five in the Algebra 2 Trigonometry Regents exam for um, January 2013. And this is part one of the multi part um, installment series. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question one. All right, so question one says, What is the equation of the graph below? So, this is the graph of a um, exponential function. So, which of these equations match this, this graph? There are two ways of doing this. Um, first of all, the first method involves the use of um, uh, transformation or translation of uh, exponential curves. So let's assume that we have um, uh, the standard parent exponential curve. It increases from left to right. So it looks something uh, like this. So let's say the equation of this exponential curve is y equals a to the x. If this were the option that we had, this were the kind of graph that we had, then option number one would be our answer. But you notice that the graph provided is in the um, is in the other orientation. So what transformation can we apply to this uh, curve in order to make it match something like this? We have to reflect it, right? We have to reflect it sideways. So since we're reflecting it sideways, a side-to-side -side reflection is a reflection in the direction of the x-axis. So whenever you have any reflection on the direction of the y, y of the x-axis, um, the sign of the x is going to change. Okay, so if I reflect it sideways and I have this curve, let's make it a reflected curve, and dotted line right here. Well, let me use another color, make it uh, green. So if I reflect this curve and I have something like this, um, then this translated curve is going to have the equation y equals a to the negative x. Okay, so the reflection in the direction of the x-axis results in the uh, negation of the x component. Okay, so with that in mind, if you look at all these options right here, the only graph that matches this type of translation or reflection is option number two. Okay, so we can clearly see that that's the answer. Another way we can uh, find the answer to this question is by making a use of table of values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point. This point is not a good candidate because um, it's common to these two curves. You see this curve right here? Both of them have this common point. So I'm going to pick this point right here. So what are the coordinates of this point? This is negative 1 and this is 2. So um, in essence, if uh, x Let's make a little chart right here. I don't need too many points. If x is um, negative 1, then y is going to be 2. Okay, so we have x, and then we have y. If x is negative 1, and y is going to be 2. All right, so which of these functions would generate this output for x being an input? So we just plug it into each uh, option and see which one generates this desired output. Okay, so let's try option number 1. Uh, option number one, we're going to plug it into y equals 2 to the x, so it's going to be y equals 2 to the negative 1. If we simplify this, this is simply going to be uh, 1 over 2, using the reciprocal property of exponents, okay? But that is not, that's not what we want. We want an output that is 2, so we can clearly see that 1 doesn't work. Let's try option 2, y equals 2 to the negative x, so we have y equals 2 to the negative the x we're using is negative 1, so we have negative times negative 1, okay? So what do we have when we multiply two negatives? We multiply two negatives, we have a positive, so this equals y equals 2 to the positive 1, which is just 2, and that is exactly what we wanted here. So that's why we showed that our answer is option 2, okay? Uh, let's try 3 and 4, even though they are not the answers, let me just show you how those work. So in this one, x is negative 1 equals 2 to the y. So to get y by itself here, we just take log base 2, okay? So if I take log base 2 of negative 1 equals, if I take log base 2 of 2 to the y, I'll have y. Now what is the logarithm of negative 1? We have a domain error here. It's not possible because log the logarithmic domain is restric restricted to numbers bigger than 0. Okay, so we can clearly see that this doesn't work. And we'll also run into the same problem here because we're going to be taking the logarithm of a negative number, so that doesn't work either. So you can clearly see that the answer is option number two. All right, let's move on to question two. It says, which, um, which other pairs of solution to the, of the system of equations shown? 
So this is a line and this is a circle. So we can graph this to have an idea as to where the solution is, or we can just simply plug and chug. The best method here would be to just plug in the answers, the options, and see which one works, okay? All right, so remember, this is your X and this is your Y. So let's try option one. So option one, does this satisfy the first equation? Two plus three, is it equal to five? Absolutely, five equals five, right? So option one is good. So we, it must, the correct answer must satisfy both equations here, okay? So option one satisfies the first one. Let's try the second one is 2 plus 3 squared plus uh, 3 plus minus 3 squared equals 53. Okay, 2 plus 3 squared is 25. 3 minus 3 squared is 0. Is 25 plus 0 equals 53? Absolutely not. So option 1 passes only one test. That's not sufficient, so that's eliminated. Okay, well, let's try option 2. 5 plus 0 is it equal to 5? Absolutely, so that checks out. Now let's take the second one. Uh, 5 plus 3 square plus uh, 0 minus 3 square. Is that equal to 53? 5 plus 3 square is um, 8 square, which is 64. The 64 plus 9 equals 53. Absolutely not. 64 plus 9 is 73, so this is not a good option. Now let's go ahead and try option 3. Is negative 5 plus 10 equals 5? Absolutely. Negative 5 plus 10 is 5, so that checks out. Right, let's test the second equation. Uh, is negative 5 plus 3 squared plus negative 5 minus 3 squared equals 53? Is this true or false? Right, let's work it out. Negative 5 plus 3 is... Um, Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 5 minus 3 is um, negative 8. If we square that, it's, uh, it's uh, oh, wait a minute. Um, for option 3, we're supposed to plug in 10. So let me plug in 10 for my y coordinates. So it's supposed to be negative 5 and 10. So this is supposed to be a 10 right here. So all we're just doing is plugging in values and seeing what works. Okay, so plug in 10 here. Because for option 3, the y coordinate is a 10, and this is what goes right here. Okay, so 10 minus 3 is 7. 7 squared is 49. So uh, 10 minus 3 is 7 squared is 49. Is 49 plus 4 equal to 53. 49 plus 4 is 53. 53 equals 53. So that checks out. So our answer is option number 3. So instead of graphing to find out what the answer is, um, you can you can do that. That's fine too. But uh, just plugging in the numbers and checking which one works is is correct. Okay. If you wanted to do it graphically, if you have a circle and a line where the line intersects the circle, those are basically your solutions. All right. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at question number three. All right, so uh, question three says, the relationship between T, a student's test scores, and D, the student's success in college, is modeled by the equation D equals 0 0.48 T plus 75.2. Based on this linear regression model, the correlation coefficients could be. Now, we just need to look at the correlation. Is it positive, negative, or no correlation? So uh, if you look at D equals 0 0.48 T, plus 75.2. In this problem, I want you to just think about your basic y equals mx plus b equation. If you have y equals mx plus b, the coefficient of the variable is your slope, right? So in this case, this is kind of like the slope. Now, if the slope is positive, that indicates a positive correlation. And in that case, um, the... Uh, the correlation coefficient is going to be between 0 and 1, okay? If you have a negative correlation, basically a negative slope, in that case, the correlation will be between uh, negative 1 and 0, okay? But in this case, um, 0 0.48 is positive, right? So since it's positive, this in indicates a positive correlation. So if you have a positive correlation, 
then the correlation coefficient is going to be between 0 and negative 1. Hence, our answer is going to be option number 2. Okay? All right, let's take a look at number 4. Um, so it says, uh, what is the comma ratio of the geometric sequence shown below? So there are two ways of doing this. You can use a formula or you can just use um, find it by inspection. By inspection, you ask yourself, what do I multiply by negative 2 to get 4? So the sign changes, you know that it's going to be a negative. 2 times what gives you 4? 2 times 2 gives you 4. So the common a ratio is uh, negative 2. And if you want to test it, multiply 4 by negative 2 again. You get the next term, absolutely. Okay, so you keep multiplying by negative 2. So by inspection, asking yourself what do you keep multiplying by over and over again, that uh, approach gives you the right answer. Also, you can make use of the formula comma ratio r equals a n over a n minus 1. Or in simple terms, you can do a 2 over a 1 or a 3 over a 2. Just pick a term and divide it by the term before it, and that gives you the comma ratio. Okay? So how about we pick a 2? This is a 2 right here. a 2 is 4, and this is a 1. So if I divide a2 by the term that's before it, I should get the common ratio. So a2 is 4 divided by a1, which is negative 2. 4 divided by negative 2 is also negative 2. So the common ratio here is clearly option number 3. Okay, let's take a look at number 5. It says, given the relation, we have this uh, relation in, in, um, in ordered pairs. It says, which k-value will result in a relation not being a function? So a function assigns every input to one unique output. So if you have one input being assigned to more than one output, then you have a problem, okay? So eight is being assigned to only two, three to six, seven to five, seven to five. So in order for this not to be a function, we must have um, one of these being assigned to another uh, output, okay? So function, for, in order to have a function, we have uh, no repeats or um, repeats in the x, okay? There are no repetitions in the x, okay? Um, so if you have any repetition in the x's and you have the x going to another number, then that will make this relation uh, be, represent some, a, a relation that's not a function, okay? So which of these options will result in a repetition in x? Eight, do we have any eights in the option? No. How about three? Oh, we have a three here. So if k is three, do we have three, four? What does that mean? This means that an input, namely three, is being assigned to two outputs, and that defies the definition of a function. A function assigns one input to one unique output. Okay, so function assigns one input to exactly one output, okay? To what? To exactly, exactly one output. You can have um, multiple inputs going to one output, but you cannot have uh, one input going to multiple outputs, okay? So an easy way to look for it is rep repetitions in the X coordinate. If you have any repetition in the X coordinate and distinct Y's in those repetition pairs, then you do not have a function. So we can clearly see that the answer is option number three.